Hello, Booktube. I'm here with something completely different. Um, not completely, but different. Um, when I moved in here uh, just over four years ago, I had uh, most of my stuff, like all my books, and what I had left of my books, that is, and what I had left of my DVDs uh, in storage. Uh, that had been in storage for about three, three and a half years, or maybe a little longer. Now, um, any of those, anybody who's been sort of following my videos from the beginning may have noticed me mentioning that I'm a big fan or devotee or whatever you want to call it of classic film and more specifically silent film. And I've got a collection of books, a small collection of books now on silent film and, and classical film as well as a smattering a few other things but i used to have a very very large collection of dvds uh over four thousand i think it was close to five thousand most of those were classic films and most of those classic films were silent so i i had almost three thousand uh uh silent film dvds i had to sadly sell most of those uh because i needed the space uh at, because I didn't have enough uh, in space for storage, and I needed the, the money as well to to live while I was looking for work. So sadly, those went, uh, but uh, there was many that were left over. And here is a uh, uh, well. I'm, I'm, I got to go through there. They're, they're they're in sort of archive boxes. I've got to go through these uh, because I need space. And I'm hoping that I can I can win, whittle uh, this stuff down so I can get rid of some and and get you know make some space. But uh, my cursory look here is that it's going to be difficult. So, but I thought I'd share um, these with you. If you're not interested in DVDs or especially silent film, then by all means, just you know skip this this uh, this video. Uh, but uh, here's. Here is the Phantom Carriage, which is fantastic film uh, from 1921, and um, it's uh, Victor Seastrom. Uh, the special effects in this is just they're they're just amazing. Uh, they're they're all done within the camera, so they would shoot a scene, and then roll back the the film, and then shoot another scene on top of it. So it'd be layered upon layered upon layer, and sometimes they did five six seven i think uh, multiple exposures on the same film to to get what they wanted so if they ever screwed up they'd have to start all over again uh and this is it's basically uh chronicles uh, uh it's about a guy who's you know he's a drunkard he dies on new year's eve but he dies um and becomes or well or is potentially going to become um uh death because the phantom carriage uh, death picks him up and says, you're going to be the next death. Uh, but he takes them on, you know, his rounds uh, for that night. And the character uh, learns about his effect, uh, what his life and his the way he's done thing is effect on on other people around him, his, his estranged wife and children, and also a, a social worker who is dying who uh, who still believes that he has some goodness in him, uh, but he is just a drunkard. And there's one thing that uh, anybody who's a, uh, a fan of The Shining, um, the, the big scene with Jack Nicholson, uh, you know, taking an axe to the door and sticking his face through the door, it's from this film. It's directly from this film. Uh, but yeah, so it's, it's a fantastic film. I used to have a box set of this. Uh, which is better, and it had uh, a booklet and everything. Um, this I would definitely upgrade to Blu-ray, but I don't have it at the moment. So that's, but that is a definite keeper. Yeah. Uh, the end of Saint Petersburg, uh, 1927, uh, Podovkin, and it's literally just about the uh, uh, the birth of the city of Leningrad, Saint Petersburg, and uh, it's a, it's a Russian. Uh, Russian film and it's got all the Russian uh, sort of you know um, style of directing and it's just visually fantastic uh, this is uh, image uh, no this is uh, Eureka just their plain Eureka one so there's no there's no booklet in it uh, there's nothing there's not even a commentary I don't think no there's no commentary 
Uh, yeah, it was restored uh, by film historian David Shepard and its orchestral score. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 very uh, bare bones uh, DVD. Uh, this is something interesting. Uh, Millet at Steepletop. It's a film by Kevin Braunlau. And Kevin Braunlau is a silent film uh, historian par excellence. Uh, he's won uh, a, a Academy Award for his work for uh, film preservation and, and being a film historian. And this is about, uh, it's, well, it says a celebration of Edna St. Vincent Millet. And it's shot on the estate, uh, filmed entirely on a 700-acre uh, upstate New York farm uh, by combining images of the natural beauty of the poet's home with recordings of her most famous poems. It's interviews with her sister, Nora, Norma Millay Ellis, an exclusive archival footage that Bronlau actually found uh, in uh, an outbuilding, and uh, it was sort of forgotten about. Uh, and it also includes a documentary uh, called The Last Tram, a poetic farewell to Glasgow's trolleys uh, that was done in uh, 1962 by Kevin Braunlau. This is uh, Region 1. Uh, it's It doesn't have much in the way. It's, it's an image. Or it doesn't have anything. It's just got the title cards uh, for scene selections in it, So, which is, which again is too, is too bad. Some of them never really with the whole hog with the booklets which I enjoy uh, the Indian tomb it's Joe May's India tomb uh, this was written by uh, uh, Fritz Lang and his wife Thea von Harbo and it starred Conrad Veidt, Lele Deputy and Paul Richter now this is uh, 1921 and it's quite amazing it's 212 minutes uh, the, the the entire film it's visually stunning it's basically uh, uh, it's just the guy who's who's uh, um, you know built is building a tomb for his wife and Fritz Lang decided to redo this sometime in the 50s I think uh, just beautifully splendid uh, colored film um, it's quite different uh, than, than the story that's in here, and it's, it's worthwhile in its own right, um, especially the snake dance in there is, is quite amazing, uh, but you'll have to look that up yourself. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, this is image, yeah, image, and again, it's got nothing, it's, it's a bare bones, so... Oliver Twist with Lon Chaney and Jackie Coogan. Jackie Coogan, uh, well, uh, people may know him from the kid, but also as Uncle Fester on uh, The Addams Family. And uh, uh, this is 1922. Uh, it's 107 minutes, and it's exactly what it says. It's, uh, it's Oliver Twist with uh, Lon Chaney uh, playing Fagan and Jackie Coogan playing Oliver. And it's quite it's quite well done. It's seventy four min, uh, minutes long. It was directed by Frank Lloyd. Uh, I don't think there's any extras on here. Is all no uh, musical score is by John Murray. Uh, but yeah, there's no extras and there's no booklets uh, with that at all, which is always a shame. The booklets are fantastic. Here's an air image, um, Region One. It's a Fritz Lang uh, serial called The Spiders. It's in two parts. It is quite long, actually. Uh, 137 minutes. And when was this done? This has got to be early. 19, yeah, 1919. And a, he wrote it as well. And the photography is by Carl Freund, uh, who did, he worked for Murnau. And he also, Carl Freund, um, I remember right he did the uh, Dracula he, he was the he was the cinematographer on Dracula a, a very very good cinematographer uh, restoration is by David and Kimberly Shepherd uh, 1979 organ score by Gaylord Carter and no I don't think there's any extras on here at all again it's just the uh, little uh, insert here which doesn't say much 
Uh, it's two parts. I don't think a third part was ever made. Uh, but it's it's sort of it's it's a it's your typical serial adventure, um, high adventure, and lots of uh, escapes and shooting and everything. It's it's quite fantastic. Uh, there's two here. Uh, this is the uh, Kino version, uh, F. W. Murnau's The Finances of the Grand Duke. Uh, it's screenplay by Thea von Harbo. Uh, who is uh, Fritz Lang's wife, and this was done in 1924, and um, it's yeah, it's just about a, a duke and his life. It's it's quite interesting, but it's it's nothing fantastic. Um, but there's some like Murnau always is a cinema, uh, like the cinematography and and the direction is is quite amazing. Uh, it's, and let's see who was the. Uh, it's Carl Freund again. That's why the the photography is is quite amazing, and this is the British edition of it. Plus, having uh, the Phantom, and this is Masters of Cinema where they do have a nice booklet in here, and it's got a number of uh, film stills uh, of Murnau and the actors, and also a nice essay by uh, Janet Bergstrom. Uh, from 2009, Murnau at the Crossroads, and uh, yes, uh, she is a uh, film historian, and, and particularly uh, Murnau uh, film historian, and uh, these are quite good restorations. Uh, the Phantom has some fantastic photography in it. Uh, I don't know if that's Freund again or not. Um, I'm not sure if that's Carl Freund. Uh, should say in here. No, uh, it's Alex uh, Gretschkar. Uh, but uh, but yeah, the uh, the Grand Duke uh, one is is Freund. So far, there's not really much I want to get rid of, uh, or wood. I suppose that could go, because if I've got it here. Um, and I think there's uh, Blu-ray of it as well. Uh, this is good. Uh, it's the uh, British Film Institute. Uh, this People on Sunday. It's a uh, film by uh, Robert C. Odmack and Edward G. Ulmer. It's basically just, uh, it, it, it's an avant-garde film uh, from 1929, and it just shows uh, them, uh, some young people going out on Sunday, having a picnic, drinking, uh, wind, uh, walking down the street and having fun and, and uh, window shopping, uh, and, but it's, it's got, it started the careers of, like, uh, while well, Edgar, I'm uh, sorry, while well, Edgar G. Almer. Uh, which producer, I believe, or maybe director as well. Um, Fred Zimmerman, producer, and Robert uh, and Carl Siodmak, uh, Carl, uh, Carl uh, Kurt Siodmak, sorry, Kurt Siodmak uh, became a, quite a big writer uh, in uh, Hollywood during the 30s and 40s. Uh, he wrote a lot of, uh, like during the 40s, sort of propaganda against uh, the Nazis. Um, Billy Wilder, uh, massive uh, film uh, film director for classic film, American film director, and uh, this does have a little bit of uh, oh, the extras are a booklet. I don't think there's a commentary on this. No, uh, but it's got a booklet with uh, a contemporary review of the film and an interview with one of the actresses from 1931. Ah, this is The Lodger, A Story of the London Fog by Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, this is quite fantastic. This is 1929, um, or 27, or wait a minute, no, trying to see a date here, I'm sure it's 1929, uh, but anyway, it's, uh, 
it's a 20th Century Fox uh, collection, a premier collection. Again, no, no um, much to it at all. There's just a little leaf leaflet in here, uh, and I think this. There's, yeah, the score, there's two scores on, on here. There's two musical scores. I can't remember which ones because I, there, there's a, a, a UK version by Network. Uh, and one or, one of them has good a good score and the other doesn't, or at least I didn't like uh, one of them. But this is quite fantastic. It's sort of like a uh, Jack the Ripper type story. Um, and uh, it's with Ivor Novello. Um yeah, it's by a novel by yeah, uh, Balak Landis, which is quite different than than the uh, than, than the film, uh, but it was remade several times as well. Um, the Lodger and I think um, called something else, but I can't remember what now. Uh, oh, Buster Keaton collection uh, by Eureka is just the the bare bones one, uh, and this I would want uh, better uh, quality ones but this is the general the college or college steamboat bill jr um steamboat bill jr i think is 1928 and college in general is 27 and it's just uh fantastic uh work by uh, buster keaton if you don't know buster keaton then it would take me too long to explain uh his brilliance if you know him then i don't need to say a word but those would be something that i would uh pass on at the moment Oh, uh, here's some interesting ones. I most of these it's, uh, I, I had to sell. Uh, it's uh, from a German um, institute, um, and this is 1927. It's uh, it's uh, sort of sports uh, um, documentary photography, but it's just they're they're, they're quite well photographed, uh, and uh, there's a booklet with it too. It's the uh, Edition Film Museum. Um, and yeah, I, uh, sadly, I had to get rid of most of these. I bought them all from, from the, um, uh, fr from Germany at the time. And there's a little booklet here. Uh, I can't remember too much about this. Uh, it's just, it, it's quite interesting. Um, documentary, 1927. Um, Zoltan Korda. Uh. Fritz Friesler for the second one. Um, I can't pronounce the German names for these. Uh, there's there's films for it. Uh, but uh, but yeah, they're 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 quite they're quite visually stunning. A lot of these, and they're they're an archive sort of uh, film place. Uh, this is. Uh, British Film Institute, the fan. Um, now this is a sound one, however. Uh, this also has the silent version of uh, Lady Windermere's fan. Uh, it's it's uh, Fred Paul's 1916 uh, version. It's uh, it's it's it's, it's our, um, or Oscar Wilde's play, uh, Lady Wind, uh, Windermere's fan, and this is the auto premier film sound one. But as an extra on here is the original 1916 uh, version by Fred Paul. And there is a nice booklet with this uh, being uh, BFI. Um, there's a little outline of Otto Preminger, uh and uh, who is the, the, the main essay for this? Uh, Foster Hirsch. But yeah, um, that's that's quite good. Uh, well, both films are good, but it's interesting to to see the silent version as well. Fred Paul was a, one of the pioneers of British uh, filmmaking. Uh, let's see here. Cecil B. DeMille's Why Change Your Wife. Gloria Swanson. Um, it's okay. Um, nothing um, superior. Uh, and there's also Miss Lulu Betts uh, on here. Uh, and this, these are from uh, early 20s, I think. Yeah, 19... 1920, I think, is the wife, uh, uh, change your wife, and yeah, 2020, yeah, they're both from 1920, 21, and Cecil B. DeMille uh, directing, 
this is the American uh, image, uh, and there's really no information uh, with these at all. Um, I mean, uh, in the sense of commentary or um, or um, or a booklet. Uh, Civil War films of the silent era. Uh, it's literally that's exactly what it is. Is uh, some uh, short films mostly. Uh, about uh, the Civil War, but were filmed in the silent era. And this is image as well. Um, there's a number of them on here. Uh, the Coward. Um, it was a Triangle KB production. Uh, Tom, uh, written and produced by Thomas Ince, uh, who was sort of infamous. Uh, and yeah, the others, the other one is as well, uh, the drummer of the 18th Granddad. Uh, no, uh, the drummer of the 18th and Granddad, uh, both Thomas Ince as well, 1913, 1915. And uh, this is uh, produced, uh, restored by uh, David Shepard again. But again, image, um, there is no, um, no uh, secondary material with it at all. Uh, this is going to be a long video. Um, I'm not sure how far I can, uh, hopefully I can get done this one box. Uh, the Great Train Robbery, 100th Anniversary Special Edition. Um, it's a VCI. Uh, I don't know if it's that, um, I don't remember it being anything, surpassing uh, anything great in the restoration. So, uh, but it is an important film uh, for our important uh, American film, 1903. Yeah, 1903. And, uh, but I don't think it has anything as well. Uh, it's got a few extras, but there's no booklet or anything. So that would be something that would be worth uh, replacing at some point. Uh, and here's, um, I don't know if I still have this set, but this is George Amelier's. And this is, uh, this is by um, Flickr Alley. And they did a whole set of Amelier's. And then they came out with uh, uh, a few more films that they that they uh, that they found that they didn't include. Uh, and he's just you know he's a French uh, early uh, cinematographer that did sort of uh, special effects type things. Uh, uh, and Man to the Moon is his big one. Um, ah, here yeah, here's another one of those edition film museum. Uh, Anders Alster Andern. Uh, this is um, oh, um, this is a big. Uh, well, it's the director Richard Oswald, but it's a good film. I remember that. It's I think it's um, oh yeah, it's one of the first uh, gay theme uh, films in the history of cinema. That's what it is, um, and it's Germany nineteen. Uh, 19 and there's not much else with it there's there is a bit of a booklet here uh, that has a bit of information on it in German and and um, and English but uh, but yeah it's one of the first uh, gay films in uh, in silent or cinema history there we go there's sunrise that's FW Murnau sunrise and uh, this is uh, with Janet Gaynor and George O'Brien. And it is Masters of Cinema with a nice booklet with it. Uh, this is something that I will definitely um, replace with uh, Blu-ray eventually. Uh, I, as long as there's a new restoration. Uh, I'm trying to see who the... Uh, I wonder if they had Janet... Uh, uh, Stone again to do this or... doesn't say who did the uh, it's just the uh, notes on the film restoration uh, but yeah no that's just a fantastic uh, film um, special two disc it's uh, re restored uh, fully con uh, commentary by cinematographer John Bailey uh, oh yeah there's yeah Janet Bergstrom's documentary on Murnau's uh, lost film. Uh, it's a reconstruction of the Four Devils. 
uh, which is quite interesting. And the original photo play script by Carl Mayer um, on a uh, on a PDF, I think, um, or at least shown on the video. But that is a fantastic film if you haven't seen it. Uh, Phantom of the Opera. Uh, this is a Eureka. It's there's nothing more to say than that. Lon Chaney. It's probably no one. It's not the best of restorations. Um, this is Carl Theodore Dreyer, uh, who I really like. It's uh, uh, Lees from Satan's Book. Uh, it's um, this is early on, I think. Uh, 1916. Oh, no, wait a minute. No. Uh, um, I forget the date, and I don't see it here. They're not making it easy to find. Oh, 1920. I thought it was early, yeah. Uh, but he is fantastic. Uh, the cinematography and the subject matter for uh, Carl Theodore Dreyer uh, is just is excellent. Uh, this is image um, uh, the region one, uh, but it would be something definitely to upgrade at some point. Uh, I don't know. I'm already at 26 minutes. I'm not going to get through this, so I'll go to 30 minutes um, or just a little more, I guess. Uh, Cyrano de Bergerac, uh, Pathé stencil color, uh, which is interesting. It's uh, uh, yeah, they, they, it was painted uh, on the uh, on the film, uh, the color for it. So it's in color. It's a silent film, uh, directed by Augusta Genie, adapted from Edmund Rostand's uh, uh, play, and yeah, it's it's usual. There's no extras much with it at all. Um, Landmarks of early film, uh, image, uh, just early early film stuff, and this includes the man uh, and, and the moon, uh, and also the great train robbery. Um, but yeah, just a smattering of, of <coughs> films from the eighteen nineties up to early um, nineteen, uh, like out of nineteen oh five or so. <coughs> um, uh, this is this is a poor sort of um, uh, restoration. Well, hardly any restoration. Bo Brahma, um, uh, John Barrymore, and Mary Astor. It's worth 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 watching for Mary Astor. Um, and uh, trying to see, directed by Harry Beaumont, uh, which did quite he did quite a few films, but. There's some interesting cinematography in there as well, but there's nothing uh, hugely uh, amazing about it. Uh, here is an older version of F.W. Murnau's um, Nosferatu. Um, there's this restored edition features a uh, exclusive audio essay by uh, Loka Heiss and supplementary materials, including then and now photographs <coughs> in PDF. So the, these are worth keeping because of the extra uh, information that's on it, like the commentaries on some of these, because they, they never repeat them again for some reason. So I've got actually quite a few, or I did have a whole bunch of Nosferatu's. Oh, this is quite, quite uh, amazing film. It's uh, Dragon Painter. Uh, Susei Hakawa. Hakawa. Um, and it's a it's a Japanese. Well, it's a cinema's first Asian American masterpiece. Uh, full length feature. Um, uh, uh, trying to find out the year and I because I, I I've not watched this over and over, but it's quite it's quite interesting. Um, um, they don't make it. It's 1914. Yeah. Or, or sorry, no, there's a feature from 1914 uh, on here. This is not 1914. Yeah, off the top of my head, I can't remember, and it's not giving me it very clearly, so I do apologize. There's some of these that I don't know uh, too well. I've only watched once. Uh, there's another Phantom of the Opera. 
Uh, this is uh, image uh, region one. And here's another one, um, sort of BFI, uh, interesting one uh, set in India, uh, throw of dice. It's quite, it's quite visually stunning, and it's got uh, a booklet that's uh, quite detailed. And I think there's commentary on this as well, uh, or there's a, a filmed interview with uh, Neaton's uh, uh, Swaini. Uh, and this was done in 19, it was made in India, basically, Germany and India, um, in 1929. It's a feature length uh, film. Uh, how are we doing? Well, let's do a couple more, and then we'll just call it quits. And then I'll do another part two to it and continue on. Uh, yes, another Nosferatu. This is probably, I think, the first time that they actually decided to go. It's called a Symphony of Horror, so they decided, hey, let's, let's, let's have the music a symphony rather than schlock as they usually did uh this has uh uh it has a film essay um uh by by uh christopher uh fraley uh so that's an on on-screen biographies of murnau yeah, those aren't the greatest but uh, the essay by uh uh christopher fraley is really good uh and since then there's been new restorations with new bits and pieces uh this is really good uh, i like the director uh it's uh, 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 the White Hell of Pitts Palu. Uh, no, this wasn't the one I'm thinking of, but it's Lenny Riefenstahl uh, as an actress, not uh, her doing her director of uh, Stink. Uh, this is Arnold Frank's epic adventure. It's about it's about uh, mountain climbing uh, Pitts Palu, and it's it's quite visually stunning. 1929. Um, this oh, it is it is G W. Yeah, I was thinking. Cause I thought it was G.W. Paps, but it was a uh, dual director, G.W. Paps and, and Frank. Um, so, and there's no, there's a booklet in here, but it's just a catalog for Kino. Uh, but I don't think it has much. Uh, it's got a, uh, it's got a uh, little documentary or actually uh, an interview with Lenny Riefstahl. Um, on here so that's quite interesting anyway I think I'll stop it there and I'll do a part two and continue on um, and see see how these go anyway I'll see you in a moment booktube bye